Hey guys, this is Two Ton Streamer, and welcome to my next video tutorial series from Ark Survival Evolved. In this video, I will show you how to run your own dedicated server for PCs, and I will also create an accompanying video with advanced server tips. Many people, for whatever reason, want to run their own server, and it can be a rewarding experience and is a good way to either build your own community or to just play with your family and friends in an environment that is completely controlled by you in any way that you see fit. This includes the ability to add those awesome mods you see or have heard about from other players. With a dedicated server, you can control every aspect of your server from what level players can reach to the additional dino levels that tame dinos can eventually get. You can control breeding times if you feel that egg hatching takes too long, and you can even eliminate an entire species from the island. So long, gigas. You can also control things like spawn rates, so if you feel like quetzes aren't abundant enough, there's a command for that as well. This tutorial should be easy enough for anyone to pretty much do on their own and does not require you to know coding or any sort of web design or programming. It might require you to have a somewhat of a troubleshooting mind, but I will try to cover the various mistakes that can be associated with first time server owners to help you out. So what is a dedicated server? A dedicated server is basically just your own private space to play the game. This can be anything from a single player game on your own machine to a local server where you use your own computer as the host and you allow others to join. This probably works best if you want to have people within your own household connect and play together. But it is still not as good as the last option in most cases which is to pay a monthly fee to have someone with likely better hardware host it for you. So to begin with, what will you need in order to run your own server? Well, to begin with, I would recommend purchasing a server from a host instead of trying to run it locally from your own computer, especially if you yourself want to play. Now, some people have a decent computer lying around that they feel would make a great server, and to them I say great, save some money and do it yourself. But I would really only recommend this if you were trying to keep it local within your own house and not shooting for a community with players from around the world. So the things you will need are a copy of ARC from Steam, a server from a host. And in this tutorial I will be using Host Havoc as my server host. They are one of the cheaper hosts out there and for the most part they have been great to use. You will also need a general understanding of web links and how to bookmark web pages. Hey, I have to say this because believe it or not some people still type in web page addresses. These are just the basics and I will go into some more advanced things later on such as game settings, mods, etc. and I'll probably cover those in a whole other video by themselves to make it easier. To get your very own host, start by going to hosthavoc.com, if that's who you choose. They offer hosting for a variety of games, and I can tell you that the response times for issues is pretty decent, and usually within an hour, even at 10 o'clock at night on a Friday. They are also constantly upgrading their control panel, more on that later, and adding some cool new features. There are some more advanced game hosts out there like Bluefang Solutions, who I hear are pretty good, but also pretty expensive. If you want a serious gaming experience and know you'll be running a very active 70 player PvP website or something quite competitive, I would probably go with them. The one I have heard the most complaints from are Nitrado. I have never used them myself, but this is just what I found while researching hosts. I saw quite a few posts warning to stay away from them, but to each their own. Your budget will probably determine this one more than anything, but for a smaller fun server, you cannot go wrong with Host Havoc. Alright, plug over. Can I have my own server for free now? <laughs> Okay, so you bought your server from wherever you decided to go. If you went with Host Havoc, you will receive an email or three within 10 to 20 minutes, usually telling you how to log into your control panel and other things such as your account creation or whatnot. Keep this email saved because it will have your server login info and a temporary password. They will also send you the link. Bookmark this link. In fact, if you're the type of person who likes their bookmarks grouped together, create a new bookmarks folder titled ARC. You will have at least five to ten new bookmarks all dealing with running a server. So the first time you log into the control panel, it will look something like this. Do not be surprised if some things do not look accurate. The control panel does not always reflect the current state of the server, so at times mine will say one of 35 people online at the top, when really there was no one online. The best way to see how many people are online is to check the ARC server selection screen on the game, or to go into ARC itself and do the show my admin manager command. Host Havoc has set your server up, but it is bare bones at this point and very vanilla. If you like the official servers, then you can just make sure it's running by looking here. If it's not running and says stopped, then simply click the start button that's located here. 
If it is, then do nothing and go put the IP address that is showing here in your Steam server favorites. Not sure how to add a server to your favorites list in game? Here are the step-by-step -step instructions for that. To add a server's IP address into your favorites in Arc, start at your Steam window and look up near the top and click View. Then you'll see this window pop up. Go down and click on Servers. Then a new window pops up. This is your servers list. At the top, select the Favorites tab. Then down at the bottom, select Add a Server. This new pop-up is where you put that server IP address, put it exactly as you see it with the colon and the numbers after the colon as well. Now, when you sign into ARC, select Join ARC. This brings you to the server page. Down at the bottom, change the filter to Favorites, and voila! If your server is updated and functioning correctly, it will show up in this list. Now that you know how to start, stop, and view your server in ARC, you might want to try some different settings. If you want to adjust anything, such as how much XP you gain per levels, your gathering rates, or if you want to put mods on, then you will need to look in one of three places. Let's discuss the three most important places where you handle the majority of settings for your server. The command line page can be found by clicking here. Once in the menu, if you do not currently have a command line, you must select New up near the top to create one. Some of the functions of the command line handle options that are just simple boxes as you can see here that you must check in order for them to be added to your server. Things like enabling Archon, which Archon is a way to remotely access your server from a web browser or even your phone, and there are also special tools available to download that deal with Archon. There are even other settings like special options, like flying dinos into caves or adding special anti-cheat commands, which can all be added through the checkboxes as you see here. One of the main things that you will need to concern yourself with is the place where you can name your server, which is found right here. Just below that option is the map field, and this is really important if you want to change the map from the normal default island map to one of the other maps such as the center map or Valhalla, just to name a few. You also have to add a command yourself if you want to add mods, but I will cover that in the next video on installing mods, but for now all that you will need is the following command on that line, the island no space between the and island. You're going to re try to remember that about the no space thing because it's going to constantly come up. If you do not see a space, don't add one. The next important place I want to discuss is the game.ini file which can be found by going here. Then it is one of the four files that's listed here on this page. Click on the text editor next to game.ini to open up this next important settings file. This file will probably be blank and that is okay. This file is where you will later on add lines for things like controlling how long items take to decay such as meat and things like that or how often your resources replenish themselves such as the stones you find on the ground and pick up or the trees that you chop down. You can also control things like how fast babies are born and how long they take to grow up. This is also the place to change specific dinosaur spawns and many other settings that I will cover in the next video that covers nothing but settings. But for now, you can safely leave this page as it is, as it's not important for new servers at the moment. Last but not least is the game user settings.ini. On that same menu where you selected the text editor for the game.ini file, you will see the game user settings.ini file. This is the file where most of you will want to really look things over before starting your server up. So let's look at some of the settings here. Keep in mind that if this page is blank, you will need to fire up your server for a few minutes and then shut it down again, and that should populate this page. Okay, so you now should see a bunch of lines of text. Each line is a separate command, and most are self-explanatory. What might not be so self-explanatory are which ways to move the numbers in order to cause the desired effect. So for example, let's look at XP multiplier as an example. It is set as 1 by default. This means that the XP you gain as a character is normal just like it is on the official servers. Now, if you want to be easier to level up, 
then you change this number by increasing it. So change it to two, you would now be doubling how much XP you get for everything that you do. I can tell you now that many people have it set from anywhere from three to 25 on most servers. If you are adding a lot more character levels to your server, like say you, you want to get your character up to two or 300, you might want to consider going to five or 10. If you want it to still be sort of tough though, you can make it two or three or leave it at one. I like to build a lot whenever I'm on my server, so I usually make my XP at 2, but I increase my resource gathering to 5. So in essence, I'm getting my levels by collecting and building versus just killing things or doing random other things. The three most popular things to change on any server is the XP, the resource gathering rate, and the taming speed. Many servers will show these numbers in their server name. So you might see a server that's named Joe's Center Map 2XP slash 5G slash 10T, which means the server is based on the center map and the XP is multiplied by 2, the gathering is increased by 5, and the tame by 10. For those who do not put this in their title, be ready to answer those questions for all newcomers to your server. I will cover these commands in more detail in my advanced settings video, so please look for that. I will give a bit of a warning though. If you are unsure of what a setting does or which way to turn it to change it a little bit, then just test it out just by going just a little bit. Don't make any drastic changes. Some of the descriptions are a bit wonky, so it might say multiplier, but in reality you will have to put in a decimal to make it lesser and not really multiplying. So also watch out for multipliers that make grand changes to the server as a whole, such as dyno count or structure counts. These can impact server performance harshly and you will want to move these up a tiny bit at a time. Otherwise your server might crash or not start up at all. Now let's talk about the most common server issue and a very important point I'd like to make. Your server must always, always be in sync with the master files from either the game or mod content. So what does this mean exactly? Think about your server as a copy of the game. The original game is out there in the cloud somewhere. When the game makers do anything to the actual game, they are updating it. Once they release any sort of update, suddenly your server is no longer in sync. Therefore, it is no longer an exact copy. Your server is now outdated and will most likely not show up in your server list. So people that are trying to sign on won't see it. It won't kick you out if you're actually playing necessarily, but if you lose connection, you will not be able to log right back in, not without updating your own game files first and then also the server. So how can you update it to get it back in sync? Well, that's pretty easy. The first thing you have to do is save your server. This is handled from within the game itself, unless you are using a program using Archon, which I'll cover more in the next video on advanced server management. But to save your server from within the game, while you're playing, get somewhere safe, um, preferably in your base or on the ground, and also tell anyone else on your server that they need to do the same. Then hit the tab key. You will see a black space open up at the bottom of the screen. You then need to type the following, enable cheats with no space between enable and cheats. Then you want a space and then your password. Make sure you have a space between enable cheats and password, but no space between enable and cheats, just as, I, just as it shows on the screen. Then, to make sure that the cheats are indeed enabled, type in show my admin manager with no spaces, just as you see on the screen here. This screen should show up. If it did not, you did not put in the password command correctly, so go back and do the enable cheats space password again. Now that you know this works, Hit tab again to bring up the black bar at the bottom. Now type in cheat space save world. Save world all one word. Exactly like it shows on the screen here. Usually there will be a bit of lag at this point as your server is trying to save. So if you try to access something like say a storage bin, it won't work. Um, you might see dinos mean walking or running in place or whatnot. And this is kind of an indicator to let you know that you've done a save correctly. Now that you have successfully saved your server, you can log out and now it's time to go onto your web browser and go to your server control panel where we were at before. And what you're going to do now is you're going to shut the server down.
keep in mind that if no one from your server has been on in the last 10 to 30 minutes, which is depending on how long your auto save timer is set for, then you can just skip the save world part altogether. Um, there may be times when you can't log in to save the world, and at this point, you, you may lose or have a rollback of up to 10 or 15 minutes, depending on what you set your automatic save to. And I'll show you how to do that a little bit more in advance um, on the next video. Alright, so to stop your server, from your server control panel, click on the stop key here, and then give the server a moment, and then it should say stopped once it's actually offline. If for some reason it doesn't say that, and it just doesn't really do anything, then simply log out from the upper right of the screen up there, and then re-log back into the control panel, and then you should be able to click stop, and you should notice that it happens pretty quickly at this point. Sometimes this happens, I'm not really sure why, but it's just something I've noticed that's seemed to pop up in the last month or so on some of these servers. So now that your server is stopped, you can update it by clicking on the little icon below called the Steam Update, which is here. And a little black window pops up with a black screen here, and the update flashes across, and you'll see decimals. Um, it may say something like 28.80, and you'll see the numbers start counting up. And what this is is basically a percentage. Just It's showing it as a decimal instead of actually a percentage sign. So once it's finished, it'll say at the bottom that server updated. And then it'll say that it's safe to close that little window and you should be good to go from there. Uh, then you'll just simply click on start server and there you have it, you're done. Um, keep in mind that server restarts generally take anywhere from, you know, I've seen it happen as like 1 to 15 minutes. Um, generally, it, it really depends on how old your server is and um, like how many mods and other things you may have. So you may start to see in the beginning of your server's life, maybe 1 to 2 minutes. And then later on, it can take up to 10 to 15 minutes. All right, so this concludes this video on how to obtain, set up, update and do some basic running of your own private ARC server. Um, join me on the next video where I cover more advanced settings and how to add mods, including how to add a map. Um, I hope this video has been informative and remember to like, share, and subscribe to learn more about this game and any others that I cover. And as always, I've been Two Ton Streamer and we'll see you next time. Take care guys.